you know, like, like we talked about, a disappointing loss, um, disappointed after the game and, and directly after the game when the players are hurting and we're hurting. Um, just because you put so much in and, and uh, everybody's sick of losing, you know, and and uh, you made a great investment and, and, and the week's work is, is good or real good. And, you, you know, you, you go down there and, and you expect to win. And, uh, and when you don't and, and the game ends and it's just tough for high, high level competitors, which our guys are. So three of our four losses are against the number 11, the number 25, and the number 27 teams in the country. And they were all on the road. They were all on the road. Only one other team in America has done that. Only one other team has played through the first half of the season that level of challenge. Oh, and the other loss happened to be against Syracuse, left the ball two feet away from the end zone, and they just beat the brakes off of Virginia Tech. So we've had a lot of hard, hard, challenging, fun, exciting, some great moments, some disappointing moments, uh, uh, scheduling piece for this first this first half. They've got to be still excited. And whatever the team and the coaches and, and the collective family uh, uh, saw themselves in August, you know, we've got we to be sure that that isn't dented and that's not chipped or cracked or, or broken in any way. That, that unified, excited for the work and well, let's just call it a swagger uh, uh, hasn't, hasn't left the building. And it has, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is it halfway through the third quarter, it's 17-14, Huskies got got the, got the got the lead, and then and then uh, with you know six minutes to play or five minutes to play in the in the in the fourth quarter, it's 28-20 ball game. So um, it was a highly competitive game, and and we saw some of the momentum momentum energy. Uh, be the catalyst for turnovers and scores and at a point in that game even on, on Saturday evening. So I'd say there's definitely a piece. And, 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 and I can't minimize that there were also a few plays in there where there was some human error uh, when Tommy went down. That surely didn't help. It was a little disruptive as it's been. Um, he's a heck of a player and there's a continuity there amongst those five. When you supplant someone new in there, um, it, it can be a challenge, uh, especially if you're majoring in something that, that you've minored in, in the past. What's his situation injury-wise? He's out for the year. Yeah, yeah. Tommy is, uh, he has a lower leg injury uh, sustained uh, that, that uh, he'll be, his year will be. Love him and uh, care for him, um, help him in, in all the other areas uh, until he's feeling well enough to have a, a, a role. Um, and, and I think that when you're a teammate and you're a competitor, as long as you have a role, mentally and emotionally, you're connected and you're, and you're feeling pretty good about what you're doing. Now his role won't be to be the guard, but his role can be something else once he's mobile and safe and, and we can keep him protected on the field and on practice field. So like uh, Crozier, for example, now a little different because it was, you know, the whole year, um, but he played a significant role for the team in 2015. It was a major help. Um, and, and when Tommy's feeling better, uh, it would be great to, to get him uh, connected at that level. Corey James played in the NFL for 10 years What was the reaction when you, you really saw that just what an amazing play that was? That's right. It was the same. It was a ooh and an ah, and a, I mean, it was really an awesome, awesome play. And I, and I share the same uh, feelings. Um, it was it was a dynamic play. And, and you know, I don't say a, a light switch was flipped, but, but um, in his preparation, he's approached the last few weeks with a different energy and professionalism. He's always been good, but he comes to work great, and, and, uh, and it's really showing up in his game. So 
you know, I would say two weeks ago, he played great, and I feel the same way about his play the last weekend. I thought he played great. I thought he was one of the players that that uh, was hard to find something to, you know, I mean, obviously there's things to coach, but each, each of the other defensive players had a play that through, through effort and trying hard, they had a play where they didn't execute the defense and, and the point of attack. So you're always at the point of attack when you're playing offensive players like that. They're going to find the area where you, you know, had a mental error. But, but uh, Doug was fantastic in the game, and that was a spectacular play. Your kids were pretty excited last year when the game ended with the whole conflict thing. Have you seen that enthusiasm starting this week already? We're excited to play. You know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I've had enough of the conversation, you know, externally, so I'm not going to get into all that business. Mm -hmm. four, four and a lot. Arkell, along with several other players, has to get the ball. So now um, he touched it, and again, I don't know, I have his statistics memorized, um, but he touched it uh, 18 times two weeks ago and 22 times Saturday. So, and he had over 200 yards of all-purpose yards. And he was targeted another f three or four times offensively. That, you know, uh, maybe it was a swing and it didn't go to him because the quarterback ran. Or it was a, a zone that was pulled and a, and a control was thrown on the perimeter. So there, he was a part of the ability to get it in four or five other times. Um, and that's how it should be. He's gonna make plays. He's a talented player. He loves to play. He prepares hard. Um, so he'll be ready again this weekend. And, and, and in that game, he's got to get the ball. Because I don't know exactly uh, what, at what moment he's going to have a game changer, but he'll have one. 